Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna cover how to calculate maintenance calories for athletes. Athlete performance is heavily dependent on adequate energy availability. In order to provide recommendations for athletes regarding their energy intake, we need to know what their maintenance calories are. Also, if you're studying for the CSES exam, you wanna know the equations that we cover and all the terminology that we're using in this video, BMR, RMR, total daily energy expenditure, things like that. In this video, we're gonna use two different equations to calculate maintenance calories. We're gonna go through those equations and the examples, but before we get into those equations, we do need to know some terminology. So to start off, BMR or basal metabolic rate is the base metabolic rate or base calorie burn that's required to sustain daily life functions. This roughly accounts for around 60 to 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. The two different equations that we're gonna to cover today, the Harris-Benedict equation and the Cunningham equation, both calculate basal metabolic rate. Once we have that basal metabolic rate, we'll have to use an activity factor to then turn that BMR into total daily energy expenditure, TDEE. Now between the Harris-Benedict equation and the Cunningham equation, how do you know which one to use? Well, this will actually depend on if you know the athlete's lean body mass. If you don't know the athlete's lean body mass, then we would use the Harris-Benedict equation. That's what we'll start with. But if you do know the athlete's lean body mass, the calculation is actually a lot more simple using the Cunningham equation, and we'll cover that second. Okay, so to use the Harris-Benedict equation to calculate basal metabolic rate, you'll need four different things. You'll need an athlete's age, sex, body weight, and height. You'll plug those things into the equation, and then you'll come out with basal metabolic rate. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the Harris-Benedict equation. Here's the equation for women, and here is the equation for men. Now, importantly, this is not an equation that you need to memorize. I think especially for the CSCS exam, if you are going to get a question about calculating basal metabolic rate, they're probably gonna provide lean body mass and you're gonna use the Cunningham equation, which we'll cover second. However, if you are a nutrition coach and this is your bread and butter and you're calculating maintenance calories all the time for your clients, then you may need to use this if you don't know a client's lean body mass. So I did wanna provide this equation to you. All right, now let's go ahead through an example for the Harris-Benedict equation. So let's say, for example, that we're working with a 27-year-old female athlete who is 75 kilograms and six foot tall, or 183 centimeters tall. Here's how you would calculate their total daily energy expenditure using the Harris-Benedict equation. You'd plug in 75 kilograms, 183 centimeters, and 27 for age. So the equation would look like this. You would do the calculation and come up with 1,585 calories for their basal metabolic rate. Now it's at this point that we need to take basal metabolic rate and turn it into total daily energy expenditure to know how many calories this athlete is actually burning in a day. So to get that estimate of TDEE, you're gonna multiply the BMR by an activity factor. And that activity factor can range anywhere from 1.2 to 1.9. 1.2 is little to no exercise per week, 1.375 is light exercise in sports one to three days per week. 1.55 moderate exercise or sports three to five days per week. 1.725 hard exercise in sport training six to seven days per week. And then 1.9, the highest activity factor is very hard exercise and sport activity and a physically demanding job or training two times per day. In the case of this hypothetical example that we're going through, I'm gonna just tell you that this athlete is training six times a week and gets 10 to 11,000 steps per day. So in this case, you would know that the most appropriate activity factor would be 1.725. So we would take that BMR times 1.725 and come up with our total daily energy expenditure of 2,734 calories. And as a reminder, this is an estimate of total daily energy expenditure or what we would call maintenance calories for this athlete. Now that we know an estimate of maintenance calories for the athlete, we can have them maintain their maintenance calories to maintain their body weight, or increase by about 500 calories a day if they want to gain about one pound per week, or find a deficit of around 500 calories per day if they want to lose one pound per week. Remember though that an estimate is really just a starting point and you will need to adjust based on how the athlete actually responds to the calories that you prescribe. And if you are wondering why we're using an estimate instead of some more accurate calculation, that's because actually measuring calorie burn would require a metabolic cart. You have to sit down and breathe into a tube and it measures how much oxygen you're consuming and carbon dioxide you're expelling, but that typically is quite time consuming and costly, not realistic for most athletes. 
All right, now let's move into the second equation, which is much easier, and that's the Cunningham equation. This equation does require you to know the lean body mass of your athlete. So for example, if you have a 200 pound athlete who's 20% body fat, then you would need to multiply that 200 by 20% to get 40 pounds of fat mass, take the 200 pounds minus the 40 pounds of fat mass to get 160 pounds of lean body mass. In the case of the Cunningham equation, it's going to be the same for both men and women. And the Cunningham equation is pretty simple. It's 500 plus 22 times lean body mass in kilograms. Two important things to note here. If you have an older print of the CSCS book, the fourth edition had a misprint and said 550 calories, but that was updated and the correct equation is 500 plus 22 times lean body mass in kilograms. And then secondly, on the CSCS exam, you're typically given weight in both pounds and kilograms. But if you did need to do that conversion, you would just take the weight in pounds and you would divide by 2.2 to get the body mass in kilograms. For example, 160 pounds divided by 2.2 is about 73 kilograms. All right, so let's go through an example because I think this one's pretty simple and you do actually wanna memorize this one for the CSCS exam and practice doing these calculations by hand. Okay, so let's say we have a 27 year old athlete who has a body mass of 75 kilograms and is 21% body fat. Using the Cunningham equation, can you calculate their basal metabolic rate? Pause if you wanna go ahead and practice this yourself, but let's go ahead and go through it. First step would be 75 kilograms times 0.21 to get us 15.75 kilograms of body fat. Next, we would do 75 kilograms minus 15.75 to get us 59.25 kilograms of lean body mass. The next step would be plugging this into the Cunningham equation and we would do 22 times 59.25 kilograms to get 1,304. We add 500 to that to get 1,804 calories as a basal metabolic rate. At this point, you'll need some sort of indication of activity level to be able to take that basal metabolic rate and turn it into total daily energy expenditure. If we provide you with that information that this athlete is training hard six times per week, walking 10 to 11,000 steps per day, then you would know that this is a 1.725 times activity factor. You would multiply that by our BMR and come up with our total daily energy expenditure of 3,112 calories per day. And again, this would be the estimated total daily energy expenditure or this athlete's estimated maintenance calories. A lot of coaches struggle with the nutrition portion of the CSCS exam, so hopefully this video gives you some practice and helps you understand the terminology a little bit better, so that way those aren't too difficult for you. If you do want even more practice with nutrition questions, feel free to join our CSCS study group. I'll leave a link in the description below. We post practice questions to that group every single week, and you can also search the group for previous practice questions for specific topics like periodization, program design, or nutrition. And lastly, if you do want to get on track to pass the CSCS exam in 90 days, then I would recommend the Movement System CSCS study course. This study course has in-depth videos, just like this, breaking down each concept chapter by chapter. I recommend going through the study course video first to really get all the big ideas of the chapter down and make sure you understand the big picture, and then going into the book and refining the details. Working this way allows you to be really efficient with the way you're studying. Also, we update this course constantly based on feedback and new research and updated guidelines, so you don't have to worry about missing out on updated information. Also, unlike a lot of other study options out there, there's actually feedback. You can leave comments underneath each video for other students and myself to reply to, to make sure that you're on track with your studying and your understanding concepts well. If you are interested in checking out the Movement System CSCS study course, you can check that out at themovementsystem.com and I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.